So we're back on the mountain bike build series, right? I'm making this sick hardtail mountain bike, and uh, I need to get the design in order before I start cutting tubes. Cutting tubes is exciting, but we need a good design. So I gotta take the known information that I have about the parts that I'm gonna put on, my body size, how I'm gonna use it, start fleshing out a design in bike CAD, and then maybe uh, taking that a step further and modeling the rear end in Fusion 360. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna cover in this video. Let's get into it. So this is the sketch that I have going so far for the bike and uh, it, it's exciting to get it together and to see it sort of like, uh, you know, turning into, you know, my future bicycle here. We have a representation of that, it's exciting. So w when I'm starting here, I wanna put in all the information that I can before I start worrying about, you know, if I click on this tab of the, di if, if, I tip if I open up this dialog box, I have things like the saddle height, bottom bracket height, C-tube length, C-tube angle, head tube angle. I have all this sort of stuff in here, which is frame centric, and I'm, I'm gonna design around this, but I, I can't really do any good designing without the parts uh, sort of loaded in there, right? I really, really super need to know the diameter of the wheels, and then the width of the tires if I'm doing any uh, modeling that shows the cross section. So like the auxiliary stay view here will show me what it looks like if I'm looking at it from like below the chain stays or above the seat stays as if I was normal to this plane with my view. You know, if you're looking at it from the rear end. And so uh, that's where you would need the width of the tire. But the, the size of the wheels is absolutely critical if you want to get good frame fit, if you want to know the height of your bottom bracket, uh, all that sort of stuff. The dropper seat post, that's a really big consideration. If I make the frame really short, this is 455 millimeter uh, center to top, uh, seat tube length, and if I make that too tall and it comes up to here, I will not be able to fit my dropper post. If I make it too low, then uh, my dropper post will not have enough insertion and the leverage, the, the moment of inertia, whatever, the leverage on, on the seat when I sit on it and go over bumps would break the frame. And so I need this seat, uh, I need this C-tube height to be in the ballpark. I need it to be pretty close. And in order to do that, I need to know the proportions of this dropper seat post. And of course, I need to know what kind of full mast uh, seat post or seat saddle height I want. Uh, I need to know the length of the fork. And that's dependent on the model of the fork I use and depending on my suspension adjustments and my body height so that I can get the percentage of sag appropriate. And I really don't know that much about suspension forks. I haven't decided on a particular fork and so I'm working off of a number that I think is accurate but before I cut tubes I need to really double check all this stuff so I have an axle to crown of 561 in there right now with the uh, with the suspension travel of 150 millimeters and uh, 30 millimeters of sag at this point which is a 20% sag and so you know that's sort of what I'm working with right now but I haven't verified that yet I need to make sure <laughs> it's very important um, but yeah, I mean, I'm just starting to flesh it in. I have an idea of what diameters of tubes I want to use. I think I want to use a 44 millimeter head tube with these external cups, right? That's a pretty common standard if you're going to fit a tapered fork like this. And so I think that's what I'm going to use. I mean, I'm sure that that's what I'm going to use at this point. Uh, I think for the bottom bracket, I'm going to use a T47 standard bottom bracket shell. That's like a newer standard in the last couple of years. It's larger diameter so you can fit BB30 cranks, but uh, it's still got threads for the... Um, uh, for the bearings to for your bottom bracket to go into your bottom bracket shell and uh, whether or not this is absolutely the best uh, I think it's good enough and it's close enough to what I'm used to and by going to this T47 whereas usually I would do an English thread bottom bracket English thread bottom brackets this tube here the outside diameter is about inch and a half I think 38.1 millimeters and this is about a two inch outside diameter which would be like 50.8 millimeters I think and so by going to that larger diameter tube here you give yourself a lot more area and a lot more uh, space for these tubes. This is the down tube, this is the C tube, this is the, the chain stays. And so on a smaller tube, it's just really 
clustered in tight together. It's hard to, to get good welding access. And then also the smaller it is, the less contact area you have. Uh, you know, like here, I can spread these tubes. This one is biased a little bit forward and this one is biased a little bit rearward. And that way, you know, the, the edge of this tube right here is pretty much tangential to the circle of the bottom bracket shell. Same thing with the down tube. This bottom edge pretty much comes tangential to the circle of the bottom bracket shell and I've moved the chain stays down a little bit and that's all in the name of making it easier for me to weld in this zone and also to get a lot of like area along these miters that will touch along the bottom bracket shell. And so going to this larger diameter opens up the doors for more crank options and also for uh, more uh, more space that I can get weld on here. And that's, that's one, of my, uh, one of the things that I'm excited about doing with T47. You can see the bend in the seat tube. I made a seat tube bender. I mean, I made a tube bender. And initially, I was thinking of it as a seat tube bender for modern mountain bikes, just like this. I haven't built a mountain bike like this yet, and I haven't been able to bend my own tube and put it into a frame, and so I'm excited to do that. And here, you can see what it would look like. I still need to, like, you know, make sure that this is exactly the degree of bend and where I want it. Uh, there's a dialog box here in BikeCAD for tubing. And so you can see, you know, the tube and the diameter, and then it'll say um, the radius of bend, and it'll say, you know, all these different things, and you, you can adjust these variables. And then there's also, also here within the tubing dialog box, there's this bend angle, right? And this shows me, how do I get a good view of it? There we go. Right there, if I click this one on and off, it shows me the degree of bend, so 22.9 degrees. Whereas when I open up the tubing dialog box, it's having me give it this sort of value, which is like a linear dimension. How many millimeters is the center line of the tube offset at its apex from the center line? If you took it from, from here you know, to the other end of the tube, uh, that B measurement is not angular, it's linear. And so in this dialog box here, uh, it'll show you the angle actually which is really cool I didn't know that that was a thing and I, I sent an email to Brent from BikeCAD and he told me that this was actually already built into BikeCAD I was asking him to act, add that functionality and he said oh no it's already in there so uh, yeah that's that's the beauty of BikeCAD is the service is awesome and uh, yeah I love that when I was trying to ascertain the seat post fit into the frame, I went to Google and I searched and so here I found this document that's made by RockShox. So I may I might use a reverb or a different, but uh, I think I'll be using a, a some sort of dropper post like this that'll be probably 150 millimeters of travel. And so down here if you look at their fit guide for 150 millimeters of travel, the total seat post length when extended is 440 millimeters and the minimum exposed uh, length is 215 millimeters, right? So so you got to pull up these sorts of technical guides when you don't have the parts on hand and you, you hope that the numbers are good. So if I look here on my, on my uh, drawing, the model, I have the total length of the seat post, 440 millimeters, I entered that, and then the travel is 150 millimeters and it's so cool, you can, it's, it's all parametric so like this number up here, this number right here, uh, this one, you see it change as I move the seat post up and down because it's parametrically linked. Uh, and that's just really cool to see that. Uh, you know, it's just, it, it's re really slick. If I want to know where it says here 215 millimeters for the minimum exposed seat post, and if I look here, that's what they're talking about is the length from the rails to the bottom of this little nut thing here. And so if I look at that, I can do, in BikeCAD, you can right click, start linear dimension. So if you ever don't have the dimension you need or you don't know where to find it in the dialog boxes, you can always just uh, right click and start a linear dimension. And then I'll right click again, end linear dimension. And look at that, it's about, you know, it's pretty casually measured. It says 208. Uh, so I know that like, you know, that, that's pretty close to what I want where it said 215. and. Uh, I know that I could I could change my mind and I could lower the seat post into the frame some, not via the dropper mechanism up here, but via the old school clamp right here. And I could lower that into the frame some, and I know that I, I have, I don't know, like what is, how much, we'll, we'll measure that. I would have, if I start a linear dimension, 
I would have a little bit over two inches, you know, 60 millimeters or so to work with right there. Come on. I have room to work with that I can extend it further into the frame and I could also pull it further out of the frame and the way that I know that is that I can change this view here to more of a wireframe view and now when I zoom in you can see the bottom of the seat post and the top of the seat tube and there's quite a bit of overlap here and I know that the minimum insertion for the seat post is going to be somewhere in here and so I have I, I can come up a little bit if I need to and I'm not going to run out of that minimum insertion that I need in the frame and I can come down a little bit and I'm not going to bottom out against this nut but if you didn't have a good way to model that like in bike CAD and if you didn't have that uh, those technical specifications like from that PDF I pulled up then it would be hard to know how to design it without having the parts in hand or I mean <laughs> it's, it's this just really makes it quick and easy to do that design work and so that's what I love about bike CAD now uh you know, there's, there's shortcomings to bike CAD too. I think for the rear end of the bike, I, I really want to, uh, I want to, let's, uh, yeah, okay. I want to use this auxiliary stay view and I want to see uh, what kind of tire clearance I get on the seat stays and what kind of tire clearance I get on the chain stays. And it's great that BikeCAD includes these functions. I don't think that this is the strong suit of BikeCAD. I don't think it's it's its best feature. Um, it's just a complicated you know thing to do 3D modeling. The dropouts and the way that the, the chain stays fit against the dropout is a little bit tough. Uh, I'm going to be using a chain stay yoke. And so in this zone, I'm going to have the CNC machined piece and I would like to be able to drop that geometry into this view. I don't know how to do that in BikeCAD. There may be a way to do it, but I think I will end up modeling that in Autodesk Fusion 360 and uh, and I think it'll work really well for that. It's a good complement because I can rough in the general dimensions of the frame using BikeCAD and quickly do that parametric modeling. It's very bike centric and then I drop a detail like the chain stays into Fusion and I can model the rear end of it. Another shortcoming maybe of BikeCAD is that if I wanted to smoosh these tubes here here. So if it's like a 19 millimeter, three quarter inch uh, tube, and the, the diameter is consistent over its length, and then right here I'm going to use some dies and I'm going to smush it. I don't know that you can really model that in bike CAD. There may be a way, but I've never found it. And so uh, you have to use your imagination or you have to model that somewhere else. And so, uh, you know, that, that's the kind of thing if I was going to just smush the tubes instead of using a chainstay yoke, then I think I would drop it into Fusion 360 or, you know, you could use AutoCAD or there's all different CAD software. I don't know that you can just draw that stuff up in bike CAD. And uh, really, that you know, the strength of bike CAD is that everything is so bike centric it's parametric and you can do everything so quickly and get a rough sketch going so now I'm gonna turn that stay view off if we open up this tab this is the primary dimensions tab and this is where a lot of the actual frame design stuff happens but you know you can't just jump right into this uh, because it really depends on the rest of the parts I'm doing a pretty slack head tube angle 65 degrees I've seen people do slacker but you know it's, it's pretty slack I think I have a Kona mountain bike and it's it's more of an old-school cross-country trail geometry and I want to say it's like a 70 degree head tube angle it is a lot steeper you know if I pump this up to 70 degrees here I mean look at that you know it's just a world of difference uh, it just totally changes the the front end length it changes uh, just so much stuff you know the people doing long slack front ends on these mountain bikes now and I don't really know how that rides it's a lot different than what I'm used to but I'm, I'm curious to try it uh, for the seat angle uh, the seat angle itself is actually 70 degrees but when you factor in the curve in the seat tube and you look at your uh, your effective seat angle which is sort of you know a line drawn between the center of your bottom bracket shell and the center of your saddle then uh, you know that starts to mean something a little bit more uh, than than what the seat angle is I don't really care what the seat angle is uh, because th th this is not rider centric what's rider centric is the relationship of my feet and the crank set to the saddle and the way that I balance my body weight over the two wheels those things matter what angle this tube sits to the ground pretty irrelevant so you know traditionally with a straight seat tube uh, you can just use the seat angle as a way to derive that relationship between where you sit and where your feet are. But when you get the, the bend in your seat tube, then, then the actual angle of the seat tube becomes pretty irrelevant. 
uh, bottom bracket height. I had this a little bit lower. Adam pointed out to me that I might be hanging up my cranks uh, a little more than I would like if I left it that low, so I raised it up some. I'll take his word for it. He knows a lot better than I do. Uh, chainstay length. Um, you know, I need to play a little bit with that chainstay yoke and see with the size tires I want just to make sure what kind of tire clearance I can get around the chain ring, which is always the pinch point right there. So I need to test that. Um, in terms of the fit, you know, I am of a certain height and uh, my arms and my legs and all those things, and I need the length from the saddle to the handlebars to be reasonable. Now, certainly you can go with a shorter or a longer stem to some degree, and that will change the fit, but if you're using a stem as a way to compensate for like the wrong size frame, it starts to change the way your body weight sits over the frame and the handling. And really you want to choose the stem based on how you want to ride. And then you want to change the length of your cockpit of the frame. You want to change that size based on your body, especially when you're building custom. You don't even need to stick to a small, medium, or large scheme. You can pick the right size, which is great, except that I really don't have much baseline. The frame that I have is a size medium. It's too small for me. I really don't know what figure I'm going for. And so I'm kind of guessing with this. I'm six foot tall. I think I have pretty average body proportions. And so, you know, these numbers here represent what I think is maybe a, a reasonable starting place, but it's just hard to know. And that's why, you know, this is an iterative design process for me and I'm learning. Um, you know, I look at size large mountain bikes and I compare their cockpit to, uh, you know, to what I'm used to on other bikes. And I, you know, I ask some other people what they're thinking. And, and th that's how I've arrived at these numbers. I don't know that they're perfect. Uh, I think that I'm young and flexible enough that I'll be able to make this work just fine. And I will take the experiences of this into the next frame. I'm going to use a short stem here. That's my idea. And that's part of the modern mountain bike design from what I can gather is a long front end, a slack head tube angle, a long travel fork. This is like 150 millimeter fork. And then a short stem. That seems to be the trend. And so I'm going to try that. Uh, I haven't figured out which stem exactly, but I'll probably use, you know, something like a 35 or whatever millimeter length stem, you know, the short length uh, without without getting one of those kooky stems where you put the bars directly over the steer tube. I don't think I'll go that far, but something like this probably, 30, 40 millimeter stem. Anyhow, uh, I'm going to cut the video here. Uh, sorry this one took so long to get out. Uh, yeah, but uh, I'm just trying to get it together. And the next one, we're probably going to be moving into Fusion 360 and finalizing some more these design details. You're gonna to wanna to hit that subscribe button because we got all these videos coming out about this sick hardtail mountain bike. I'm freaking stoked. It's gonna be cool to watch it come together. You, know, you don't wanna miss any of that. Uh, so I hope you find the video useful and we'll see you on the next one.